First of all, very briefly on the heritage part, very, very briefly. Um, oh, I don't have to shout, actually. I usually yell at my students. So, um, look, uh, heritage doesn't have to be old. Heritage in Australia means it's culturally significant, it's there for the future. These buildings here are trendsetting, and we've actually got, even though there's an argument that it hasn't gone as far as hoped, it's certainly not the um, <clears throat> environmentally sensitive design, but the rammed earth design has, has proliferated in the area. If you want to see it around the corner, is a church. It's a very unusual concept, but we actually got that as well. So it actually has proliferated, and the argument was this is culturally significant. Hence, this particular building and the EIS building, are, or now the environmental sciences building, are protected. Look, let's start on what I'm doing. Uh, my wife thinks that uh, you know part of my brain is a really scary, dark, and morbid place because wherever I go, I see rotten decay. I, I teach cultural heritage, and as part of this one, we have to maintain historic buildings. And wherever I go, I see literally things going wrong. That's one part of my research. The other one is about nuclear power plants. We'll talk about that later if you want. Um, the heritage of them, I mean. Um, not to keep them. Anyway, look, um, this is the common thing we're dealing with. All of us have this problem of rising damp. It is a serious issue, and we have to deal with it. The nice thing is I'm talking about here is that we now have... 17, 20 to 70, well, between 70 and 20 years of building experience on these and other buildings. We can now look in hindsight and see what happens if. I want to first, though, go very much further back in time. I want to take you to Jugyong, and if you're going back to Sydney at one point, go past the Jugyong pantry, get a coffee, it's sort of okay, and then go and have a look at this one. This is an 1850s, 1860s building, hard to, de uh, um, to date, and around 1930 it lost its roof. This was a complete building. Um, it would have had a window here, a window there, door there, window, another window, and this, that's it. It's interesting to see how rammed earth without any protection whatsoever can last. Now, of course, you can't live in it anymore. It's a bit eerie, but the key point is this is rammed earth in its old fashion. No cement, no nothing, just normal compaction. Um, you can see in standing walls, you can see very clearly the individual layers of compaction. Um, it would have been a, a form board of about a foot at the time, moving it up, as, but basically it was one board, um, very heavily compacted on the top. As you can see, the bottom part is not. As you can expect, erosion over time means the compacted areas erose less, the softer areas will erode faster. This is basically an un uh, unconsolidated normal earth. When the walls fall, as they eventually do, you get this. And this is very interesting, which I find intriguing from a historic perspective. You will see this turns into slabs. And what has happened is that when they were put the next layer of earth on and compacted it, there was already a dry surface. The top had been heavily compacted, walked on, and then dried off. And so when the next layer came on, it didn't consolidate. Yeah? So this is an issue with all form boards, and obviously you're working it differently. But if you overcompact the surface and then have a next layer on, that's what happens. That's historic stuff. Um, and eventually, of course, now it's overgrown. If you go there now, this particular wall is a nice little pile of dirt with grass on it because it's sterile soil, but of course it turns into things. A couple of other interesting parts. Um, one of the big wall, that big long wall standing there, has different surface treatments surviving. On the southern side, you have a bit of render, if, oops, a bit of render left. You've got a fell off soil, whereas on the northern side it's heavily decayed. Here are the two walls, uh, faces of the wall in contrast. Um, trying to work out what the heck's going on. Why is this one, why does this side look so bad? This one isn't. It's not rain. It's not a moisture impact, that's clear. So what on earth is going on? If you do a shadow analysis, you will see that one side is exposed to the sun, the other one is not. The shaded side has much less decay than the non-shaded side, and that's basically nothing else but thermal expansion of the clays. You're going to get, 40 in summer, 40 degrees of uh, temperature in the shade, if you want to be horrific, just try and put a thermometer in the sun. It's about 60. In the, when it's outside ambient temperature, 40. The sun temperature is about 65. 
So you're going to have a massive thermal expansion and then a contraction and so forth. That will act on your constituent materials. And this is something you've got to be fully understanding of, and we'll pick that up in a minute. So upshot is um, unprotected walls will have that kind of stuff. No, normally that doesn't occur. There's something called a roof, there's something called an eave, and you've got all those kind of protection mechanisms. But if they aren't there, then you're exposing it to the full environment. So let's move to Thaguna. And Marcy will have a talk, and you walk, talk and walk here, and you will see some of this. Now, I do want to make it absolutely crystal clear that I'm not bagging anybody here. I want to make it absolutely crystal clear that this is something, a lot of stuff was not foreseeable or the experience wasn't there. This is hindsight. This is having 20 years of environmental decay acting on it. And I want you to have a very, very good look around. How many buildings are built this day and age with a life expectancy of 30 years, 35 years, and you start again? Yeah? This is testament, but what, the way it's working, the way it's standing is testament to the design and to the, and I hate this term workmanship because there are women involved this way, the quality of work, I should say, of what's going on here. This is a great campus, it's great working, and this will stand the test of time, minus the problems that are going wrong. Yeah? Next time you design something, you can be aware of it and avoid certain things. So I'm taking you on a horror trip, but it's actually not as bad. So I'm going to look at a few sample locations. This is the Environmental Sciences Building. Information people are gone now. Um, this is the old herbarium that is a teaching space. It used to be computer lab, but it's not PhD buildings. The places I'm going to take you to are those exposed walls here. They're screening walls for the toilets. I'm looking at the parapets or the porticos here, and I'm looking at some pieces of uh, material which are lying flat on the ground. And I'll walk you through this. This is the gold standard for all comparison. This is the yardstick. These are screening walls to screen the toilet doors from you know, prying eyes, because otherwise you literally look into the toilet cubicle if they're open. This is an unprotected wall, uncapped, but it is roof covered. This is as built. If you want to see an, an environmentally non-touched wall standing there for the free, open, covered, uncovered wall for the past 20 years, that's it. We've got two of them, you can see them. Yeah? No, perfect, intact, the surface still has a sheen. It's very soft, no erosion like an internal wall. That's the, uh, the gold standard for everything to be compared with. This is an uncapped wall. This is environmental decay acting on and a wall, no protection whatsoever. So all I was doing is I thought, ah, oh, you know, you see this. I was, I'm interested in this decay and rot, as you know. So I thought, ah, oh, this is decaying. Oh, it's very easy. I can set up a laser level and I can just measure the erosion, right? And we can get some idea how quickly that will decay. The buildings of Jugyong I showed you, I've been watching that building since 1993. Every time I drive to Canberra, I tend to drive past, and ever so often I step out of the car and take photos. Yeah, so I've got a 20-year timeline on the one in Jugyong. So I thought, oh, let's do this here. And that's fun stuff. Well, not, but for some people it is. Right? <laughs> so, okay. So I set it up. So here's another example, you know, unkept. Here's clearly something which is still intact, and then massive erosion going on. Assumption is that works like any rock. Yeah? You've got granite outcrops, they, they granulate, they gradually exfoliate. That's what we assume, right? Nah, 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 nah. So set this up here, some poor student, Laura, happily assisting, have a laser level running, a laser point running exactly parallel to the line. Takes ages to set up. And then you've got basically a point which you can run up and down and measure, and then you measure the distances between. That was the assumption, gives me an idea of erosion, right? And then we just plot the whole thing and we get a three dimensional plot map. Yeah? Uh, no. Red is loss, green is gain. What? I was just at first stunned. What? How can this be more than the reference point? It's very simple. What's actually happening is if you start banging this a bit, it's drummy. 
what's happening is, this is just the mapping now of the decay levels, all this area here is protruding. Why? You've got moisture coming in on the top. Clay is a hygroscopic material. It will suck in moisture from the environment. It will swell. It will increase in volume. The external part doesn't. What happened is that in the external sections, you've got something like a fire skin. That's with a brick. This would be externally hard fired. The inside is soft. That's your normal brick. What happened here is that wall was sprayed. Some are sprayed with PVA. Some were sprayed with a silicon spray. That creates a slightly more dense, consolidated external surface where the hygroscopic index is less than on the inside. What happens is that the moisture coming from the top unprotected will dribble in, and capillary action will suck it in. You will have an external surface that does not expand. In between thermal expansion, you've got 40 degrees of, of ambient temperature, 60 degrees boiling under that wall. It will expand on the outside rapidly, the inside doesn't. You will create microfissures. These microfissures will drag in moisture through capillary action and the internal part will swell, the external doesn't. Basically, you have created a non, even though it's supposedly uh, an osmotic area and you can have an exchange, it doesn't work that way because the internal part is different. If you had a concrete wall, if you had a stone, if you had brick, it, which is homogeneous in everything, it would be fine. The internal part is not fired. It is unfired soil with some cement in there, minimal. It does give you structural strength. It doesn't give you the, doesn't stop the um, uh, hygroscopic nature of it. You have this expansion. As a result, the external skin just pops off. So here's an example, and, and that is supposed to work. I need to press buttons, I think. No, I love it when things don't run. Excellent, okay. Um, I apologize, this is not working when you transfer it from a real computer to a prehistoric monster. Um, on my Mac, it will actually show you a video. Um, sorry for that. So this whole thing is, let me go back one. This whole surface will pop off. She's just pushing a pencil in, and the pressure she puts the pencil in would not leave a mark on your skin. It pops off. This here is supposed to show this clown here rubbing his hands over it the same way you would stroke a dog, yeah? and the whole thing comes off. This is mass massive loss. This is basically adhesion loss caused by this one. It's an uncapped wall. No one would do this, and it wasn't intended. It was a screening wall. It was not structural. It's not relevant. But I think it's great because it shows you the worst-case scenario. Yeah? Use those as a learning tool. And keep that in mind when you look at them. Go and fiddle with it. Touch it. Doesn't matter. It will fall eventually. Um, the key point is compare it to the screened walls which are protected. Yeah, it's simply moisture ingress. Okay, so here, same thing, then you've got some other issues. Now, I want you to look at this. Let's go back one more. You've got here a rammed earth wall sitting on a, on a, on a cement block foundation. Um, that's fine. Problem here is two things. One, there's a crack. That's a settling crack, which is an issue. The damper, of course, is broken. More importantly, the moisture comes down here settles on this interface, it's a different material. The, as the moisture percolates through, it temporarily sits here and then starts dissolving the base. So that's the structural element. If that would apply to all walls, moisture coming down, in this case the crack here, the seam between the two panels, acts as a, a conduit for moisture and it will settle on here. And as you can see here, you've got quite substantial moisture loss, uh, 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 fabric loss. Uh, another issue here are walls like this. Typ typical effects of decay, which are known from adobe buildings around the world. Uh, here you've got a hard surface. This is the screening wall. If you look between, you will see substantial decay on that particular section down here. That's very simple, very logical. You've got that stupid roof. Yeah. Someone put that roof on, which is perfect because you need that roof. Obviously, otherwise the whole system gets wet. However, 
Um, next time round, make the eave of the roof a bit further. The upshot is this eave protrudes about 10 centimeters. The rainfall col uh, collects here, drops down, and because this is the hard surface, which doesn't slope away from the building, you have a splash effect. You actually have got raindrops dropping on it, bouncing off, and hitting it. And it hits above the damper, of course. So you actually introduce dropping rain. All well-known facts, but here's a great example. Interesting is this part over there. It doesn't occur. See, here's massive loss. Here is not. But if you have a good look, what protects this happens to be the de debris which comes from this part of the wall, <laughs> this sand. This is now a rough surface. There is no bounce effect. Yeah? So here's the proof in the pudding. It's the bounce that does it. Yeah? So next time, as one will, if it's stuff for you to think about. It's micro things, but eventually this wall will decay and you will have a substantial problem down here. Then proof course is fine. No one thought about the bounds. That's, but that's okay. I mean, part of this, I see this, and Marcy said it early on. This is, or someone else said, this is a learning experience. We got now 20 years of hindsight. Yeah? These are micro things, but think about a client. They might not be overly happy if they see that, and they blame your work. It's not your work. It's just the micro thing that people didn't think about in the initial design. And sometimes it's the idiots. So, sorry. It is the people who later on make the landscaping nice. Yeah? You think about that you as the designer are one level, then people live in this building, and they do things. Yeah? The worst thing is gardening and mulching. I hate it. Yeah? No, it's wonderful. Just keep it away from the building, please. Yeah? But people just mulch and then bypass temper, of course, and they say, oh, it's rotting. Yeah, well. Yeah. So here's a good example. All right. The care of capped walls. Um, Rick was mentioning the capping. Here's something which is quite interesting. These are the porticos. It's not structural. If that falls down, it, doesn't, it looks ugly, but it doesn't damage the building. Usually not. Might kill a person, but it's not a real issue. Um, but if you go closer, you will see massive decay. What's going on here? They're capped walls. It shouldn't have occurred. I think what happens here is that the capping is too narrow. And this, the way it's designed is that the moisture which comes on there runs. And instead of sheds, it dribbles around and ends up into the wall. And you've got falling damp. So broader capping would potentially solve that problem. Yeah. It's not unpredictable. It would possibly also look ugly if you get that wider ledge up there, but now in hindsight, it's an issue. So there's massive decay, and the other portico has got exactly the same thing. You've got exfoliation, it's falling off. All the same processes of an external skin being thicker and denser than the other apply here. Okay, this is, keep in mind, 20 years of... of thermal expansion, 20 years of, of water moisture coming in. Yeah? This is long-term hindsight stuff. And so next time around, think about that, potentially. So here's a close-up of it. <coughs> and no, OH&S and work cover doesn't let me climb up on the roof. So hence, I'm using a tele lens. Um, yep, quick example here. This is the vent put in. You've got decay up here. Let's ignore this. This is the thing I want to show you. Um, some people, like myself, at one point got bigger offices. Now we're back to small ones. And halfway through the construction, several walls got ripped out. You may remember this. No? Oh, yeah, up, upstairs, balls were put in. was perfect. And then we decided to have double offices, so a separation wall got broken out. That wall was then put as a landscape feature. And it's flat on the ground. And you can see what happens long-term decay of rammed earth, which is exposed to the ground, even though it's cement consolidated. If you want to have a look at it, it's a great example. OK, this is what I want to point out. One more for them, I'm done. These are window sills. Lots of those window sills are corroding, or uh, eroding, decay, exfoliation, collapsing, and so forth. Damp-proof causes are intact. It happens on the ground floor, it happens on the first floor. It has nothing to do with damp of course. It's falling damp. What occurs is, if that's your window, it's an open space. Yes? Designed as an open gap, and there's an infill. 
the moisture runs down the um, runs down the uh, windows the window frame settles on this particular sill here it doesn't shed just above the um, vent and then it runs into the gap in here and consolidates in here pools and you have got falling damp and decay it's not a structural issue has no structural relevance so it's not an issue but it's ugly and you get people criticizing it and this is the thing i wanted as a take-home message for you oh this is just an example of failing of the damper of course because of settlement and bypass or here people actually bypassed it this is buildings and grounds so should they have their ears pulled yeah, you don't do this kind of stuff, but now you've got salt in there. And that's about the last thing you want. Yeah. Um, I think the other thing to consider is people are using buildings. Think about the client. You're leaving it, you're doing some great job, you're walking away, you've now got clowns owning this building. They will utilize things. And now I'm on record, I know, so I'm very careful what I'm saying, but CSU is not a good landlord. Yeah? I teach heritage, they're wrecked heritage buildings in town, Right now, we are modifying things continuously. As people are living in it, they are changing it and so forth. So you will have follow-on effects such as this one. Expectations change and people don't usually, you build a building and it's very great you're coming back and looking at it, but most people build and architects build and then walk away from it. Yeah? You have to think about the long-term operations of something and certain things may or may go wrong. And this is where these kind of examples, I think, may help. Now, the interesting part for me was I did not really not expect that weird behavior that the external skin would come off. It actually is worse. It would have been better, ultimately, if I think if it hadn't been treated. Yeah? Because then you would have had, yes, a small amount of ongoing erosion, but you wouldn't have that cleavage. Now, in 99% of the time, you will never have capped uncapped walls. There's only one here, the part of the um, um, former switchboard building, which is now integrated into this tin shed, um, that is, uh, is uncapped, the rest is capped. Now have a look at the oldest building, which is the pavilion. Yeah? No decay, no nothing, because the roof is there. So you go elsewhere, and you still, I think you've got other people talking about it, historic properties elsewhere. PCA buildings, if the walls are stable, if they're protected from moisture, will last. There's nothing not going to happen. But if you undo it, it's there. So I'm the one in decay. I'm looking at the stuff which go wrong. Thank you. <laughs>